know you want to document this, but you need to tell me which what? way to go here. I'm, yeah, I'm watching. So this is my new roof rack. The reason I went with this roof rack is uh, because it was about $1,000 less uh, for the roof rack ladder combo than, than some of the other um, known brands out there. Cool thing is they made a cutout for my vent and uh, added a few other custom things like they sent me some crossbars so I was able to put my rooftop tent on here. Anyway, this isn't a video about the roof rack, it's about the electrical setup. So I'm going to start with the roof and work my way down. So the first step is get the solar panels in place. So I decided to go with Renogy for as much of my solar setup as possible. Um, I have them in my last van build and it worked great. Whenever I had any questions about uh, anything solar related, their customer service was really quick and easy to work with. Okay, now I need to make an extension with some of my extra 10 gauge wire. I'm making my extensions with some MC4 cable connectors. Then I'm gonna attach the two panels in parallel. Cut a hole in the roof. It's one inch across. I'm just gonna clean it up here and paint a little bit. I'm gonna add some edge trim to keep the cables protected. I added some lap sealant and now I'm going to put the cable entry box on. I'm using double sided sticky tape from 3M to keep the entry box stuck to the roof and then I'm going to put some more lap sealant around it to protect it. Alright so the cables come in through here and then they'll go under the panels and they're going to follow this cable line back to the garage. So I'm going to zip tie them. Now I need to run a cable from my vehicle's power distribution center back to the DC to DC charger. This is gonna make it so my house batteries charge off the alternator while my vehicle's running. Okay, so I popped off this power distribution panel from the battery and I've got this free spot for a fuse. My cables came up and I had to feed it through and then through all this and it pops out right here. So I've sent the ignition wire through as well. Since I have a small alternator, I need to attach it to this terminal here which is only live when the engine is running so that'll tell my DC charger to pull power from the power distribution center So now I'm building my positive and negative bus bars. I use a guide from Nate at Explorers Life. Basically you don't want all your wires coming off the batteries. Uh, you want to run them through bus bars. You also want all your negatives to be separated from the batteries with a shunt. I'll put a link to Nate's video in the description. He has all the steps and measurements uh, if you want to make one of these yourself. And 
All right, so I'm sending some wires over from my inverter to the AC breaker box, which is gonna power all my outlets. I'm using this box that has both the AC breakers and DC fuses. Nate at Explorers Life recommended it. Even though it's a little bit bulky, it's smaller than having two separate boxes and is gonna look a lot cleaner. Now I'm getting all my DC wiring together. Uh, getting a good crimp is super important. There's a bunch of different tools you can use. I decided to go with this $20 uh, hammer crimping tool that I got off Amazon. So once I made all my cables, I wired everything up and then I connected my negative bus bar to the chassis. For my chassis connection, I used the bolts from one of the cable tie downs in the garage. I cleaned up all the metal and sanded everything to make sure I had a solid ground. So I <laughs> got my whole electrical system set up like a day ago and I was having a hard time getting my charger to keep topping off the battery. I don't think I did anything unsafe or anything that should have caused an issue, but I was trying to charge it from the alternator, which is this terminal, and the ground terminal started smoking, and so something back there caught on fire. Fortunately, the unit's fused, so this fuse blew, uh, protecting all of that expensive stuff, the batteries and the inverter. But, but Renergy so far, they've been a great company and they're gonna have me ship it back for free and then they're gonna test it and they're gonna probably find something wrong with it and send me a new one. Probably another few days, maybe a week without power. Unless I figure out my shore power and I can, if I figure out my shore power, then that will be good. And I can just plug in. It smells like 4th of July. This brings me to my third charging option, shore power. I decided to go with a 30 amp hookup since most campsites in the US use that plug. I started by cutting a hole in the side of the van, then ran 10-3 stranded wire into the inverter. I installed a fusible disconnect box that I got from a local electronic supply store to protect the inverter from the short power. And I replaced the wire coming from the inverter to the AC breaker box with the same 10-3 stranded wire. The cool thing about this inverter charger is that you can program it to limit how much power it pulls. Most of the time I'll have it set to 30 amps, but there are times when I'll want to plug it into a regular house plug with an adapter. In this case, I'll just limit the pull to around 15 amps. Once I had a way to keep my lithium batteries charged, I wired up my lights and USB plugs. The light wires went through the PEX tubing I had installed previously, and I left some extra slack in the lines so I could choose where to place them in the ceiling later. I'm holding off on running the AC wires until I have my lower cabinets built out.
Okay, so everything's hooked up. Renogy replaced the charge controller, and I'm gonna just run through my system so you kind of have an understanding of how everything works together. Okay, so this is the part Renogy replaced. It's, it's a 50 amp DC to DC charger with MPPT. What that means is it controls power coming in from the alternator as well as power coming in from the solar panels, then it sends it to the battery. So the solar panel positive lead comes in here, the negative lead goes in here to the negative terminal, which is also grounded with this wire, which goes down to the bus bar. Uh, there's a couple other wires that are attached. One is the ignition wire for the smart alternator, and then the other is the battery voltage wire, which basically tells the controller the state of the battery. This will come on when the vehicle's running and charging from the alternator. Uh, this light's on now because the solar panels are connected and charging. This tells us that the battery connection is good, and then the blue light is for the lithium charging profile. So the wire we sent from the power distribution center came out here and attaches to a terminal here. And then this terminal in the corner is where the power goes out. And I have it running through a 70 amp fuse um, where it connects to the battery. So I've got two lithium batteries here. They're each 100 amp hours, 12 volts, and they're wired in parallel, positive, goes up here and this switch controls the positive bus bar. So right now all I have connected to the positive bus bar is my inverter through a 200 amp fuse and then my DC distribution center through a 100 amp fuse. This wire comes up from the battery, connects to the shunt and then the negative bus bar is attached to the shunt. And then coming off the shunt, there is a wire for the battery monitor. So the battery monitor tells us the condition of the batteries as well as um, if it's charging, how much amp is being drawn or added to the system. When I flip this switch, it shuts down all of my DC power as well as power to the inverter. Overall, I'm happy with the electrical system. Uh, big advantage is how simple it is and how I was able to cut out a bunch of wires by using the controller from Energy that combines the DC to DC charger with the solar controller. Unfortunately, I'm seeing a couple of drawbacks from the controller. One of the disadvantages is that it splits evenly the amount that it'll pull from the solar panels and the alternator. So for example, on a overcast day like today, I might only get a few amps of solar power. And if I were to go drive somewhere, it would only pull 25 amps from the alternator. If I didn't have the solar power connected, it would pull 50 amps from the alternator. To get around that, I might do some sort of solar cutoff switch, but I wish that you could program the controller to prioritize the alternator when it was running. Another issue I've had is that it's randomly stopped working and I've had to reset it. You have to basically disconnect all the wires and reconnect them, which is kind of a pain. To get around that, I'll probably add a couple more switches to cut power. Anyway, if you're still watching, thanks for hanging in there. I've linked everything I've used in the description. Most of those are affiliate links, so they help out this channel if you use them. And I'll also link some other channels that I used for inspiration or information on this build. In my next video, I think we'll tackle the kitchen as well as a few other things in that area. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have, thanks for following along. We'll see you soon.